Greetings, friend. This is part two of my Almost Lock Set tutorial. In this video, I'm going to build upon what I talked about previously with XYZ wings and WXYZ wings and talked about some more unique cases of using the Almost Lock Set XZ rule to make candid eliminations. I'll explain all the expert tips and tricks as I do it in definitions. Click on the link below if you want to try some of these puzzles yourself. And with that, it's solving time. So this is our first example, and we're going to look at these two cells here in row one. And then I also want you to look at these two cells here in row four. Okay, so we'll kind of go over some of our definitions again. So if you remember, a lock set is when the number of candidates are equal to the available cells in a house. And so if you have like a naked pair, say this was a 3-7 and another 3-7, that would be uh, a lock set, right? The two candidates fill the two cells. An almost lock set is when the number of candidates equal the available cells in a house plus one. So if we look right here across row one, you can see there's three separate candidates, three, seven, and eight, and they're in two cells. And so that is an almost lock set because we have one extra candidate above the two cells. Same down here, you have two, seven, and eight, three different candidates in the two cells. So these are two different almost lock sets. In any Sudoku puzzle, a phase like this, you're, you're going to have hundreds of almost lock sets. I mean, you could keep growing. Like you could add this cell right here, and you'd have uh, three cells with four different candidates, three, six, seven, eight, and that would be still an almost lock set. Okay. Now, to get some value out of this, we want to compare two different almost lock sets to make some eliminations. And so then we're talking about the almost lock set XZ rule. And so uh, there's two types of that. There's a type one, which is a single candidate connection. And that's what I'm going to do in today's video. And then there's a type two with a double candidate connection. And I'll cover that in a future video. So with this, the type ones we're looking for is two almost lock sets. That's what we have here, right here. In here, two almost lock sets. We have one restricted common candidate that sees all of each other in both sets. So you can see what candidate in the purple sees all of its uh, corresponding candidates in the orange. And you can see it's this eight, right? So this eight is the restricted common candidate. And eight's got to be either there or there to make these sets work. Then you also have to have a common candidate, which is available in both of the almost lock sets, and you can have more than one, but you have at least one. And so in this case, this, you see there's a seven here, and then there's a seven here. The twos are not, you know, common can because there's no two up there, and there's no three down here. So it's the sevens, right? And so the seven is the Z candidate, where the eight is the X candidate. So you got the X and the Z. And then what we can do is we can eliminate any candidates outside the almost lock set that see all of the Z candidates. Well, okay, that's a lot of talking, right? So what does that mean? It means that anything that sees, any cell that sees all three of these cells that contain the seven, which would be this cell right here, you can eliminate that seven. All right, that's what the ALS XZ rule means. Now, why does that work? The reason it works is because of this restricted common candidate, the eight can only be in one or the other. So the eight can only be up here. If it's up here, then this becomes a lock set to seven. And then this one be L7. If it is down here, then this becomes a three. That becomes a seven. This can't be a seven. Okay? And the eight has to be in one of these to make this work, right? Because uh, if you put the seven right here, you put a seven right here, you eliminate that. That'd be a three. That'd be an eight. And then this would be a two. This would be the eight. This would be a two. This would be a seven. And you have nothing to put right there you'd break the puzzle. That's why you can make this elimination. Okay, so this is our first situation. So what you're looking for is, all right, I have a candidate that shares both. I have another candidate that's common to them and they see some kind of candidate outside and I can eliminate that candidate. That's gonna be a good uh, almost lock set XZ rule elimination. Let's move on to our next example. All right, for our next example, uh, we're gonna sit here and we're kind of look for some almost lock candidates. And I can tell you with, with it's not an XYZ wing, which is kind of easy to see, or a WXYZ wing, which I've given you some 
tips on how to do that. This is difficult. It's difficult to find because you're looking literally through hundreds of these almost lock sets. So I'm going to try to give you some key pointers of what to look for. So you get to this situation. Obviously, you know, you go and exhaust all the other possible strategies that you can use. You know, the normal ones that involve buy value sells and you get stuck because that's when this almost lock set is going to play. Because right, as, you know, as a more most most advanced strategy, you want to try the easier things first that are easier to see. But if you're completely stuck there, then you can start looking for these ALSs. And so the ALS, uh, one tip I'd give you is you want to focus on buy value sells, not part of a, uh, not necessarily part of a naked pair like this, though we may make some eliminations here or this, but buy value sells usually play a part in almost lock sex because the less amount of candidates in these, then the chances that you know you take you just have one extra that you're going to be able to be and make an almost lock set. So let's look across the bottom. Um, look at these three cells here, right? Three, four, two, four, and two, six. And so there's th four different candidates: two, three, four, six, and three cells. That is an almost lock set. Now we want to kind of see if can we marry this up with another almost lock set. So what's a candidate in here? that's only appears once well the three and the six so let's look at this three if we look up it's like all right can we look for another almost lock set that just would be able to see this three right here so you look up here no threes there but there is this cell right here that could see a three okay so three four nine so let's look at this three four nine well you need at least one more cell because there's three candidates here if we look across this way I could add this cell, this cell, and this cell. And now I have one, three, four, seven, nine. Okay. But there's really nothing there that would create an elimination. These fours are too spread out uh, to make any eliminations. There's no twos in it. Uh, and then a six, there's a possibility. But we've got to be able to find a six that sees that six. So if you add this cell right here, and now you have a five cell ALS with the candidates one, three, four, six, seven, nine, with six candidates, you have a restricted common candidate, the threes do see each other, and now do we have another candidate? Yeah, a six. And so does this six and this six, do they see any cells in common? Well, there's no sixes across here, but if you look right here at this cell, row nine, column two, it has a six. And it sees this six, and it sees that six. These threes see each other. We can make an elimination right here. We can eliminate that six. This is an ALS XZ rule elimination. It's a valid one. Hopefully you see how that works. And if you're like, eh, I don't understand why that is, well, try plugging a six in here, and you'll see how this, this puzzle will break if you put a six in. Because the three's got to be in one of these two spots. And by putting a six right here, you take out the sixes from these two spots, and then you don't have enough candidates to make these uh, into lock sets. All right, hopefully that clears up for you a little bit. Let's move on to our third example. Okay, for our third example, I want to show you that almost lock sets aren't just across the rows. You can do rows and columns. You can do columns and columns. It all matters is if you have that restricted common candidate and you have you know, another common can, at least one more common can where you can make some eliminations. Uh, so let's, for our third example, this should be a, a pretty good one here. Let's look for almost lock set. Again, I try to look for buy value cells that are not part of a, uh, a naked pair. So I'm looking here in column seven. If we look at these two cells, three, four, six, three, six, you know, that's uh, two cells, three different candidates, almost lock set. Another thing that's kind of good is that it's this is contained in two different you know two houses, so it's in a block and it's in a column. This will increase your chances of making some eliminations if you can find it like this, because uh, because yeah you know it it works with the the eliminations only work if you're dealing with you know houses and if you can restrict the houses that will help with the elimination part. All right, so now we want to look and go okay, is there some almost lock set that we can apply to kind of use some of these candidates here. All right, so you can see there's a four right here. There's sixes right here. Let's look, there's another maybe almost lock set we can use that has 
just one of these cannons. So you see how there's four. Let's, let's check this out right here. So look across row six. So one, four, eight. I need at least one other cell. So I can add that. I go one, four, eight. But one, four, eight, and one, eight to go with it. There's no other. There's no common candidate. But if we look right here at this cell, what do you see? Uh, one, six, eight. So now you have a six, which is a common candidate with these sixes. You have the four, which is restricted common candidate because the four is restricted to this house. And we have ourselves uh, two almost locked sets that satisfy the XC rule, right? So the fours are, are here. The four has to be either there or there to make these sets work. And then the sixes are in here. And so where's this six see these sixes? Uh, well, across row six here in block six. So we can eliminate that six right there. So you can eliminate that six right there. And so now you can move on further with this puzzle. Uh, sometimes there's some opportunities where you can eliminate uh, cannons within the house, more cannons within the house, but it's not the situation here. Uh, but this is super helpful. So what you want to do, look for some of these almost lock sets. Look for at least one by value cell in the almost lock set. That seems to be a key that I've noticed. Another thing, um, you're trying to look for a candidate that meets with some other candidate, you know, and so you look for another almost lock set with two at least two matching candidates. One's going to be that X candidate, restricted common candidate. The other's going to be that Z candidate, which can make some eliminations. Uh, once you get that going, and then you will be on your way to identifying and eliminating some of these. Hopefully this has helped you understand almost like that the XE rule a little bit better. In my next video, I'll cover the type two, where you have two candidates. So basically restricted common candidates can both see each other, and you can make even more powerful animations, and to be able or not, I think it's a little easier to see than these. Check out some of these other puzzles to see some more cool puzzles and solving strategies. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Thank you so much for watching.